Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this over here is Sir Henry Deadman. And this case here is a fractal design torrent, which I've done a video on, which will be coming out soon. <laughs> and actually replacing it with RGB fans, if you're curious. Oh, yeah. And we are here for this week's podcast, and there's a lot to talk about. I've been looking at all sorts of stories, and so is Henry. And the first one is quite a silly one, which is enjoyable. Which you actually shared from TikTok, didn't you? <laughs> Originally, I, did share on TikTok, yes. I found it on Mashable. You which... found it on a more reasonable platform. I found it on a on a For larger platform. Where you can share it properly. So, you the Coffee Stain Studios, the people behind Goat Simulator and other mm. games, many other games, Grounded's on from Coffee Stain as well. I think, isn't it? Uh, yes. Has and... announced Goat Simulator Three, which hilariously mm. they've skipped. Goat Simulator 2 cool. and gone straight to the Goat Simulator 3. Mm. And this is the trailer, which is reminiscent of Dead Island 2, which is a game that has been in development for forever, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's never coming. It's not, it's not happening. It's it not happening. looks like it should be a lot of fun and silliness and, mm. and the usual shenanigans. And obviously the initial intro bit here is very reminiscent of that but i think like then there's zombies chasing the running guy and all isn't there? Uh, yeah he kind of as he's running he's self-obsessed with himself but then he like sees people start to run past him and things and he sees like a girl and then stuff starts to go mental around him and then the zombies and things and they come and chase him down yeah and this and this we just got goats appearing out of nowhere but there's actually people. quite a few brilliant things going on. did you play much of goat simulator or not? Uh, uh, not officially but i've watched um other streamers play it I played some of it mm. uh, a fair bit, and then my kids got into it because they just thought it was hilarious. And my yeah. daughter was particularly crazy with it, like dragging people into the street and laughing as they got run over <laughs> by cars and stuff. But I was seeing, like, I saw like a goat driving a car and yeah. one throwing laser beams out of its eyes. Yeah, <laughs> like, this this looks, looks like, like it's gonna be so one, stupid. And... It looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward that to that. Sense. I am, however, ever so slightly disappointed because it's going to be on Epic to start with. So. Well, you can wish list it. Now. You can. It looks like it's coming to Xbox, Epic Games, and PlayStation. But yeah, but no you never Steam. Know. Be free on Epic. You never know. <laughs> I wouldn't they have thought do so. They give but... a lot away for it. Probably won't be. Well, but at they some do give point. A lot away free. Yeah, at some point. But I, I hope maybe there'll be some co-op. We can have some <laughs> coat simulation mm -hmm. shenanigans. Could they be, did release an MMO. They did an MMO of a goat simulator at one point, which was silly. But oh, it was like, yeah, yeah single player shenanigans and silly silliness. And then yes. the next, the next update is a few. We're starting off with a few different game things. Mm. Uh, Henry and I have talked before about Battlefield 2042. <laughs> and <laughs> are you doing the music? Was that the yeah, music? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was because I wasn't allowed to have the music, so I thought I'd do my own version. <laughs> I just, it's just the first that first bit of thing. They're like, oh, this is a new map. It's like, no, that's Damavan Peak. But carry on. Yeah. Uh, I know it's sort of like you can jump off a thing and the floor is like, yeah, it's, it's Denver Van Peak. I know it. And well, so there's been a lot of controversy and interest, which we'll go into in a minute about this. Um, but uh, it's been a long time coming. I think they've delayed it. It's it's meant to coming out today, I think, actually, or maybe is it, it actually, was yesterday. Uh, it was it was very recent in terms of I, I don't when know it was it when it was launched. No, I don't think I do either. <laughs> And based on the other stuff that I've watched. So, like, people posted this and shared it as being exciting. And I think it mm. looks like the initial trailers that they released before the game launched. Yeah. And so I'm taking it with a massive fistful of salt. Because it does, I just, it just has like... less of the operators visible, that's all. Yeah, and they're, what, they're throwing in another operator, two helicopters, mm. a load of new weapons, a, a new map, which is apparently not as big as it looks like. So that's meant to be a good thing. But then you've got, as we've discussed already, these handheld TV missiles, which in theory sounds like fun to play with. Oh, and there's a crossbow now, which apparently kills yeah. with two hits. And the VSS, though. That's kind of cool. The VSS with different side magazines. I know it's, some of it looks like it might be all right, but uh, yeah. it doesn't fill me with, yes, I want to get back into it. Cause I yeah, just saw... No, I mean, the only benefit of the new one is that you can just get in a private server with bots and do what you want to do, but it gets a bit boring after a while. I'll tell you what, I watched this I watched this video and as I said I thought, ah, oh, it's just more of the same. And then I saw this end bit 
and he's just fired a crossbow with a grappling hook into a plane yeah. that was passing by. And it's, I'm partly like, oh, it's an, it's an only in Battlefield moment, but it's also like, oh my god, that's so awful. I just, I don't want to play it. <laughs> there we yeah. go, 9th of June. <laughs> so <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday. And I, well. I say all this grumpy stuff as a person that played Battlefield, like every Battlefield game since 1942. Boy. Since 1942 on a laptop <laughs> many years ago many years ago and now I've just ruined mm. Battlefield ruined it and it's just not been the same since and no. I'm, I'm very sad no. about it very sad it's your, it's your and I've best. read a few things about this and I think mm. one of them is this which has been so there was a claim earlier on in the week which according to somebody at the, oh here you go Jeff Grub at the Grub's Next Giant Bomb show. They said that the uh, EA team behind Battlefield is on what was it? what was it abandoned uh, ship mode. Abandoned so ship or skeleton crew mode. It's an yeah. insignificant. I oh, know EA says there's a significant team, but the claim is that there isn't. There's a skeleton. Yeah, there we go. The game is basically down to a skeleton crew, and they're yeah. and the other extent of this article is it basically says they're trying to churn out content fast, but yeah. not really. You know anything that's going to blow your socks off by the sounds of it. It's, it's probably yeah, it's like stuff that's already been done and was just ready to be polished and sent out, um, and then they've already started work on the new Battlefield. Yeah, um, and Battlefield. But, I think we talked about the fact that they're doing a mobile Battlefield as well. Yeah. They do mobile everything now. So, just, yeah, I don't so, get it. I get it's another place to play, but if it's free to play, then you need to put money into download bucks. And if you got to pay for it, it's not very good. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the point of it is, really. Um, yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. But just to be not entirely controversial, here's the mm. here's the trailer for Call oh. of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Actually, this isn't a trailer. <laughs> this is a gameplay session, seven minutes of oh. gameplay from COD. Now, COD and Battlefield, I think they've broken both of them and ruined them. But I think as we've discussed yeah. recently, I, I mean, I've always enjoyed the, the single player. They're, yeah, COD is getting better with its single players gone back to more logical and traditional storytelling that they used to have. The multiplayer is still all over the place, but it's these, these are at least two. a bit more traditional to what made it really great. Once uh, yeah. they sort of abandoned the World War Two theme. Cinematic. Um, oh, this yeah. is an Infinity Ward one, isn't it? So they usually alternate, don't they, between the teams? Uh, yeah, and the true, Infinity yeah. Ward ones, I always felt like, were more polished. Than, than the ones that came from other development studios yeah, and just felt somewhere. better. But I hate this. I hate the way they're doing this demonstration of what the level is. This is like one of the developers is, is in control of the character and they're just walking as slowly as possible around the map to show yeah, you. No one's going to play it like this. They're trying to show you what the... Look at what I created. Look at all the shiny things. Yeah, it's so it. painful it's to watch because just... you can't tell me that any COD player would play it this slowly. <laughs> like People, no, not people that play Warzone will be charging well, around you, this if map. If you could, then there's no point in playing the game if you're not even needed for these parts. So. Uh, it's It's... Yeah... I, yeah, I have mixed feelings. I will buy it for the single player. I probably I won't play the multiplayer. Yeah. I don't think I'll pre-order it, but I it does it has a lot of the original characters in it. I don't like um, mm. Captain Price is going to be back in it. I think there'll be some excitement. There's always been a lot of thrills. It's a cinematic experience. I think it's a, an immersive cinematic experience. But I was thinking about this earlier. This sort of gameplay that you can see is very. It's so old school in the way they've done it. Because it's yeah. so it's so corridor based, and you can still see it even when he's walking really slowly. That the other that the NPCs are stacking up and they're waiting for the player to actually do stuff. And if you don't do what you're meant to do, they'll just stand there and it's wait for you. Yeah. And I always feel like that really breaks the immersion because if for some reason you don't know what you're doing for a second, or you get distracted because there's some shiny loot as he just walked past, then yeah. the the rest of the characters just stop what they're doing and don't do anything, and you're like, oh, yeah, and that like just ruins you... the whole thing. It ruins the whole experience for me. <laughs> And I just, yeah, like, I don't feel like they've progressed from like 10 years ago or something when they, it was the same sort of thing. It's, yeah, it's entirely the same. I'm sure it's, it's very just, difficult. I'm not a I game they, developer. I'm well, sure no, it's I think hard. they're just trying to go back to that theme of like the old modern warfare games. They're like, well, this was great. Everyone, everyone agrees these were great games. It's like they were great because they were different and now everyone does it. So it yeah. isn't as great anymore. 
Um, Don't get me wrong. I think this, uh, this experience, this cinematic immersive experience, is excellent. And I mm-hmm. think the the Modern Warfare from 2019 was really good, and the Black Ops one that followed it was also really good. For mm-hmm. this sort of the way they'd done it, it's like playing a movie, but they just break the immersion sometimes in how they do it, and I think it's yeah, and it just feels a bit too old school sometimes, and it's a bit disappointing. But I'm, I mean, I still think it's. I still got better hopes for it, but it's also so vastly different to the multiplayer and to the Warzone yeah. experience, which is, you know, a lot faster paced. Hell on earth, yeah. It was it's still open open comms in it and stuff, and cartoon character skins or <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's seven minutes of gameplay. Yeah. I'm not going to spoil that too no. much. <laughs> I've seen like the launch trailers, and there's like the, they got the night vision special bit in again because everyone likes the night vision zines, so you can go dark. So they're doing all the little, all the great bits for people. But yeah, yeah. I don't know it's, it's, it's Call of Duty. It's it's better than it was, but I don't know. Mm. Yeah, you've never been a big fan. Not uh, not for a long time. Not since four. So onto something completely different. Oh. Uh. Did you see this? NASA has assembled a UFO research team. Take a look. Like I, they don't already have one. Um, I saw another but, title that they're saying they renamed it. They changed the name of it to be because it's unidentified aerial phenomenon is what they're going to be mm. investigating UAPs because it sounds yeah. less mental than UFOs. So if you say NASA's mm. looking at UFOs, it makes them seem a bit like tinfoil hats and stuff. But Maybe, they also have but... a press release about it. So they're basically saying that they think it's unlikely, which apparently this doesn't want to load now. They're, they're saying it's unlikely they actually find any UFOs of alien origin. And based on looking at evidence of what's already out there, they, they think it'd probably just be, you know, it won't I mean, be in aliens. space, yes. But there's constantly, like, there's been three, like, Senate hearings about UAPs where the military is saying... Well, the American military at least is saying, yes, these things are real. We don't know what they are. They're not of a nation that we're aware of that has designed them. And they're not ours. So <laughs> there are the releases things where they've been officially, spotted. Officially, there are things flying around which do not have a a creation basis in a known military contract. So a bit, so I imagine, yeah, they're not in space, it's because they're already here. <laughs> um but it's a bit, yeah, I think, I don't know, maybe it's just a funding avenue. It feels a bit strange for NASA to say they're doing it when they've constantly been doing this anyway, because any sort of area phenomenon is basically something that isn't man-made that they've seen in space or seen in the sky as a UAP. Um, so, Is this related kind of, as well? You shared this story, didn't you? I think I saw something about them detecting an unknown origin signal earlier this week. It, it's the second one. Right. Um, so they detected one a while ago from some three billion light years away or something. But a second radiation or radio burst has been detected from the same place at, almost, at pretty much the same frequency. And then like, if it was a star, it would have changed a bit. So it's a bit strange that it's two separate incidents of a frequency burst coming from the same place. And it's this sort of... I think some star system with like seven dwarf stars. So it could be the stars doing it and they're just in a certain pattern that's making it happen regularly. But then they're like, oh, but it could be an alien life form. It's like, well, it is. They're 300, 3 billion years old, so they're probably dead now. Um, <sighs> which makes more sense. But <laughs> there's, there's all the different theories are like for alien life, it's either they're too far away or they exist, they come into existence and disappear billions of years before we do because the amount the time that exists is eons, you know, of existence. So there's plenty of time for a civilization to span billions of years and then disappear long before we even crawl out of the sea. So there yeah. might have been an alien species once. They're not there now. I find but... that fascinating. Yeah, so the, mm. the further stars away, that light's taking that long to travel, that, that star yeah. might not exist and stuff like that. It's crazy, isn't they, it? They said, like, literally, like, everything we look at is ancient. Um, there's no real time footage of anything. Even looking at the sun directly is eight minutes old. So you'd never know something happened to the sun until it was eight minutes too late. Um, so it's inter- interesting because like there's some stars that are supposed to go nova soon and leave little nebulas behind. So suddenly just they'll just go 
and then there'll be a nebula there instead of a star which would be quite cool <laughs> but um yeah it's, it's interesting because it's nice to it's it's fun to fantasize and think about but i think we're a long way off shaking hands with any alien species at the moment <laughs> yeah if ever talking about ancient things though ancient things Golden eye, 007. the glory days could be making a return so apparently there's some achievements that have popped up on xbox mm -hmm. viewable achievements on xbox's website and suggests that rare might be working on a golden eye remake which apparently was rumored on the xbox 360 but never came out <laughs> and then there's, so something might be happening <laughs> Ooh, something, exciting. something possibly somewhere is happening at some time I think we talked I mean, might, recently might... maybe a couple of weeks ago about Perfect Dark getting yeah. a new getting a new outing so it makes sense it's for weird, isn't it? Cause, cause these are like things you associate with Nintendo but because Rare's been spun out on their own now they, they've still, I'm surprised they've still got the licenses for it but yeah. they have. oh what if that South Park game came back I played that forever. I don't know what South Park game. Oh, there was like a South Park. It was like a first-person shooter game. I can't remember what it's called, but like, I remember you had to like throw snowballs at chickens. But <laughs> it it looked just like the game, cause, like the TV show, because obviously it was just flat cardboard people coming towards you. So it was, but you could walk. It was the first time the town had been mapped out, and you could walk around. It was really cool. <laughs> That'd be nice to come back. Just, just thinking of Xbox and Nintendo games I used to play. <laughs> But yeah, no, I'd like um, I'd like a Golden Eye. I thought when you said HD Double Seven HD remake, I thought the movie was coming out again. I was like, oh, cool. Sean Bean, <laughs> loves a bit of Sean Bean. Um, apparently, the, no. apparently the um, Bond films are all getting pulled off Amazon shortly, which made no sense. That was the news today that it's cool. the last chance to watch all of the Bond films apart from the newest ones because they were like because they bought MGM. Yeah. And so yeah, they had the they... license to show James Bond, and it's like, now we've got all the catalogue on Amazon, but now apparently mm. they're pulling it all, so I don't oh, know. Maybe they're going to do some remasters and re-release them. God knows. Maybe it's not making I, enough I money. I only really watch from Pierce Brosnan, if I'm honest, because the older ones are excruciating to watch. Oh, really? Um, I like the original Sean Connery ones. They were darker uh, back in those days know, before they started just... getting really cheesy. Yeah, it's, it's just that I can't deal with, really. I just, I don't know, they just don't, I mean, I, there's certain cool bits, like bits in Moonraker are quite cool, but for the legitimate film, I would only watch from Pierce Brosnan onwards. <laughs> yeah, but some of Brosnan's got a bit. Well, some, yeah, the, the, the one in North Korea with the ginger guy. It got really cheesy. <laughs> yeah, Don't Have a Day, it was all right. No, not Don't Have a Day, Tomorrow Never Dies? Tomorrow Never Dies, that was good. Um, And this one was good. Yeah, and Golden and then, Eye. Golden Eye is a classic, and because Golden of, Eye, so because of the true. game, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And then tenuous segue back into games. Yeah. Ready or not? Yeah. So ready or not? I've talked about before, and oh. they've just announced this update, which I think you've seen. But mm. they're working on this. I don't think it's actually ready yet. But basically, no. they're improving the enemy AI to make it even more terrifying. So this game is already pretty hardcore, and if you've not played yeah. it. Basically, it's a five-person, five-person tactical shooter. Yeah, five. Yeah. Yeah. So you can play it on your own and go in with bots, or you can play it with your friends, and uh, basically have to clear out buildings and whatever else, and you have to deal with suspects that will tend to shoot at you. And then they introduce knives so they'll run up and stab you. Yeah. But now they're introducing it so they'll not only run up and stab you or punch you, but then they'll also run off and try and find cover and then run back to you. So they'll like hit you disorientate you and then charge off and hide again and then come yeah, at you again go out and stab you so you've got and they can hide behind cover now so they'll also run to cover and sneak out and you'll see them in it like them shooting from behind cover but there was like this, they've gone into so much depth that the suspects can be obviously made to drop their weapon if you can intimidate them with gas mm. and flashbangs and whatever else 
but they can also be put in a position where they'll do that where they'll pretend to be dead and then they'll get up from the floor so they'll play dead if there's enough shooting going on oh my god <laughs> and if they drop their weapon for some reason or if they haven't got a weapon but they see one they'll charge over and grab it and then try and use that against you <laughs> which is nuts but they also said <laughs> that at some point the AI has been developed so that if they feel like there's too much for them they'll even kill themselves <laughs> so they'll put wow. the gun on themselves it's like the level of detail they're putting into the AI is just unbelievable and in a minute you'll see if you've not seen it already someone come from underneath a bed so they've actually worked out how to get these terrifying <laughs> suspects with knives to hide <laughs> under a bed and then just slip out and try and stab you and I, I mean that's going to take some adjustment to get used we already get destroyed in quite, we, quite a few yeah, levels we don't really take them seriously I think that's what the problem is like we don't yeah I think you need to use a lot of flashbangs but here you can see the you... cover system so you'd see them yeah. shooting from behind cover now and to the point where they'll do that where they're just shooting uh, their amazing. gun over the top which is going to be hardcore and oh, it, I love it this is like, it's so intense and yeah. I love what this development team is doing with this game because they just keep adding more and more to it and regularly and making it more and more interesting and I think it's, they're doing such a good job with it it's just going to get better and better but it is really hardcore, it's really unforgiving but I don't mind it because it's just hilarious when you die, <laughs> it's yeah. not like one of those games you play, I always felt like when you play Squad, no, yeah Squad and Armour and games like that where it's like a mill sim yeah. you'd go for ages you'd get killed and you just oh what did i get killed by and it was so annoying in this game that can happen but because it's i don't know because it's a shorter game because everybody dies really quickly i suppose then you have to restart yeah. it's less well, annoying but <laughs> yeah once you get to a certain point everyone's dead you're like oh, i'm just gonna go rambo then and see what happens you just walk around wait till you get killed so yeah and obviously you could be more sensible you could check under yeah. every door with a mirror gun flashbang every room <laughs> be a bit more careful with it but it looks yeah. like even if you are careful now you still got to deal with people hiding under beds, people behind <laughs> vine cover. Yeah. It's some guy in a cupboard. Oh my goodness, there you, no. get, you can see them it's slipping just, out. It's just going to make me start from under cupboards beds. and like I'm going to start shooting like dead bodies. <laughs> Look like, at that! I just opened a door and there's a, guy yeah, with a shotgun there's in there. <laughs> It's brilliant though. Look at the animation and stuff. It's oh, so well put. Wow, look, there's a little gun was, peeking out from under a bed. There. They look, they look like more horrific than they do people. They just look like yeah. scary ghosts now. <laughs> I think it's going to be so funny. But it's it's just going to make me shoot anyone that's on the ground, like just to double check they're dead. Like, yeah, I'm just going to be double tapping bodies. Like, well, that's what they're going to they're going to pretend to be dead. So you know those game the levels you go in where there's been an active shooter and there's yeah. loads of people on the floor. I bet they would just find. Oh that my god, they're just, just going to shooting the body. Oh my you god, can go that's... over and you know suggest that they need to surrender, or you can handcuff a body that's on the uh, floor. So okay. I suppose if you get there quick enough, might not be a problem. Amazing. Were they going to add a dog? Is that did I hear that right? Or was that this game? Uh, I don't remember. I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. I heard that we're going to add a dog, so you could take like a. That'd be great. Like sniffer, like dog sniffer dogs. Oh, that'd be amazing. And then you could like set them on people or you could get them to... It makes people back down a bit more when there's a dog. I don't remember seeing that, but that does sound great. Maybe it's the other one. There's two like this, isn't there? There's one that's not very good. And then there's this one. We, <laughs> now, we thought that was... Henry's talking but... about Zero Hour. That's which, the one with the multiplayer, yeah. Which was fun to play and it isn't as good as Ready or Not, but I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't say it was awful. <laughs> they no, are improving it too, good. they do regularly patch it, but Yeah. It, it didn't it didn't grab us as much as this one. There you go, look, no. this is him killing themselves, so wow. they will turn a gun on themselves sometimes if it gets a bit too much for them, which is <laughs> And then you've got so... to try and stop them from killing themselves. But that guy was threatening oh. suicide and then changed his mind. So it's just how, like how it's gonna stop be... them killing themselves. A beanbag like, shotgun shoot, or shoot them first? <laughs> this, they like they tased him so he wouldn't do it. Oh, okay. That's a like real life situation though, isn't it? Because police have to deal with people trying to kill themselves and they have to try and so stop we... them. So you're going to have to have like someone with like a shield, someone who specialises in breaching, someone, a couple of people who shoot, someone who's like non non lethal, so you can like alternate roles. And, like, yeah, you're going to have to take one person of each role, like the Power Rangers, and then go and do. I love this as well. Did you see that? Just um, a few seconds ago, I'll rewind a little Taking bit. Taking a selfie with the yeah, because they tried to make it so it looks like they're just do they're living their best life, waiting for you to turn up or you know just going about their business. So be like you're punching a container for some reason or 
smoking a cigarette yeah. or doing a wee and then <laughs> and then there's a guy taking a selfie next to all the massacred bodies like what it's mad yeah you're gonna weed up and shoot with a beanbag in the dick it doesn't <laughs> you know when some games try to do this though and it just looks awfully cheesy it looks yeah. like they've thought this out so well and it looks like it will work really well i think this is it and once they tweaked all the light and all the levels it becomes so difficult to see stuff yeah like, you know the, the crack house that just got worse and worse every time now like First time it was kind of quite well lit and green, and now it's like there's dark bits, and there's that other room that's just that other tented building that's just mental. Then there's the caves that are still in it if you drink a different mode. Anyway, well, this whole yeah. podcast is about that. Let's talk about some other hilarious game nonsense, which is yeah. the War Thunder forums have been used for a third time to leak classified okay. military intel. And um, so. <laughs> I think it was Chinese this time. It was a Chinese tank that uses um, tungsten weapons. Yeah, so tungsten penetrator ammo. And basically someone was in a rage because they'd they'd said something wrong about (laughs) So the part in question is high velocity, non-explosive, 125mm sabot round fired by the Chinese Type 96 and Type 99 MBTs. One of the people, Liberation Army's main killing tank round. And apparently that there was some discrepancy in the game in the pre-alpha or something of what the release was going to be and made somebody so ragey that they went on the forums and posted well no that's wrong and uh leaked classified information about it and this isn't the first time it's happened because it also happened with british challenger 2 and the french clerk main battle tanks as well (laughs) it's like crazy so this game i feel like war thunder's made by Gaijin, isn't it? And aren't they it Chinese Gaijin, as yeah. well? It's like leaking information, yeah. Developed by yeah, Gaijin. I, mean, I don't. It's weird because I don't really class that as like a a hardcore mill sim because no, it's kind of it's kind of arcadey. I think there there is a realistic mode, but it is still quite arcadey. Um, so I'm surprised that you know people that work with these tanks all day go home and then play that game. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit mad. Yeah. Pretty funny though. Interesting. Yeah, I like War Thunder, but um it's very grindy now, so Yeah. There's been a lot of game news this week though, so I hope mm-hmm. you're into games if you're watching because the next one is it's that game Marvel game. Spider Man series is coming to PC. Ooh. So they've announced that the Spider Man is being remastered and is coming mm-hmm. August, I think, August twelfth, and then the Miles Morales game which followed it, I believe, yeah. is coming in the fall. Which I oh. thought was starts in August. So I don't know when. I don't, no, I don't like know when in fall that is. October or something, isn't it? It's just after. Yeah, I'd imagine. So this is one of a lot of different PlayStation games that are yeah that are coming to PC at the moment because they're making the Last of Us Part One got announced yesterday. Yeah. So that's getting remastered and released, and there was also a bunch of other ones. The Uncharted games are getting released on PC. And uh, there's a bunch of others that I can't remember the names of that have been around for it. I feel like Heavy Rain and those sorts of games were as well. Um, no kills they're, yet, though. They're a lot older. But I think the Spider Man games were highly praised when they were on console. Yeah. And they've obviously said that when it comes on PC, it's going to have ray tracing and other things. They've no. not released all the details of it yet, but you can expect better graphics. It'll be everything. Yeah, of course it will. And ray tracing. Yeah. And all that no good stuff. Zone. I want Kill Zone. Do you? Yeah, Killzone was great. All all of them, even the last one. Really good. So that's pretty neat. Lots Mm. lots of exciting stuff happening there. So Um, games. Yeah, and then onto the hardware side of things. Hardware! Hardware! Razer has announced two new mice, which is the Basilisk V3 and the Death Adder Essential. But the things that make these ones interesting is they're going towards uh, sustainability. So they've got some logo from UL Eco Logo Certification, which basically means they've checked every step of the process of making the mouse to make sure it's sustainable. So all the packaging, mm. manufacturing process, anything involved with the repair. So basically, if you buy a mouse, you know it's good for the environment, which I think is it's not the biggest news ever. It's not. No. <laughs> but I think but, it's a really good move from Razor to be yeah, doing this. And- I mean, recycled plastic is probably the least they could do. Yeah. Because you're not going to notice the difference. Um, well, yeah, and it could be beneficial on the mouse, actually, because yeah. it would be kind of rougher, so easier to hold. Yeah, rougher and lighter weight, because it would be kind of hollowed. So. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's a good move. And I've seen um, El Gato is quite good on this sort of thing. Because whenever they send packages, the boxes have like minimal plastic in. And I mean like very small amounts. They use a lot of cardboard and paper in their packaging. So it's nice to see these big companies making moves towards helping the environment because it's obviously an important bit. And as somebody that reviews tech <laughs> for a living... <laughs> It's nice to see it because obviously I'm promoting people buying new things and if all that stuff is not good for the environment, then it's bad. End up in a landfill somewhere and yeah. stripped strip for gold at some point. So yeah. that's that's that and there's RGB there. And then Ooh. Samsung's announced the world's first 240Hz 4K gaming monitor in oh. the Odyssey Neo G8, which is a 32-inch, I believe, 32-inch yeah, monitor. So it won't replace my G9 because it's not big enough. <laughs> um, but it's 4K and it's 240 hertz and it's got quantum HDR 2000, uh, 2000 nits of peak brightness. And it looks very similar. It's got that sort of same look as the, yeah, the big rest of the Neo dome at the back, yeah. G9 nose uh, Odyssey lineup even. Um, I, however, think that 240 hertz 4K is stupid. And having a claim to the world's first 240 hertz 4K monitor is ridiculous because good luck running any game at 240, over 240 FPS on a 4K display. Like, <laughs> unless you're playing CSGO, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I know I can run Rainbow Six at 300 FPS, but that's 1440p. I don't think yeah. at 4K you'll be able to do it. And if you're trying to play AAA titles, uh, that you won't get that much. So I think it's kind of one of those things, you know, when you get a, a razor and it's got like six blades and you think, how can they make this better? <laughs> we'll put eight yeah, blades on it. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's like stupid. It's just for the sake of it, I think. And then they've got the G7, which is slightly smaller. So, I know it's 32 inch 4K, um, but this one has mini LED. So interesting because uh -huh. mini LED and... OLED are the new new technology in terms of screen yeah. technology, which were really expensive for a time. Mm -hmm. Now I will say that I think I remember reading that the G8 is like a grand and a half, so it's not cheap. But that said, the G9 was one thousand two hundred, I think, so that wasn't cheap either. But that's forty nine inch. So would you pay thirty? Would you pay over? Would you pay a grand and a half for a thirty two inch monitor? No. It's really steep, isn't Not it? At all, no. But it is 4K, and 4K doesn't look mm. glorious for gaming, to be fair. <laughs> but I just True. think, I just think, I think the Odyssey lineup is really good, and the mini LED and OLED tech there is really good. And obviously, having a 4K screen, it probably look great. And obviously, high HDR, high peak brightness, um, it probably looks amazing. But I just think the 240 hertz trying to make that as the selling point is just nonsense, really. But <laughs> that is the way of marketing. <laughs> Onto something completely different this time. Hey, vroom, vroom. A Polestar. Oh, nice. Electric, electric Polestar 3. Now, I'm not electric. really into SUVs. Although this one looks okay, I think. Mm, it's that like a crossover, yeah. It's kind of nice. SUVs very in America is a very American thing, isn't it? We really don't we're not really big into Co SUVs uh, Officially, no, but all of our cars are basically the, the crossover brand, so it's like a a raised fan, like four cut four door car, isn't it, with a hatchback, so they kind of become SUV X's. So, what was interesting to me about this is a few different things, though. Not the car itself necessarily, but mm -hmm. the promise. Polestar's basically saying they're going to release a new car every year for the next few years. So it's mm -hmm. obviously good because they are an electric vehicle brand. Is what they're pushing, and that's yeah. the big thing that they're pushing. And obviously, the more that more of them, the better. And mm -hmm. they want to have a tenfold growth in the next few years as well hoping to get up to 290,000 by the end of 2025 mm. and to go wider, so 30 global markets by the end of next year, which isn't particularly interesting, but it does mean, you know, they're making new cars, they're pushing them out, and they're going to make a big deal out of it. Also, this one's interesting because it's going to have uh, autonomous highway piloting, which okay. is supported by best-in-class LiDAR sensors, but also mm. has NVIDIA computing in it, so it's going to use oh. NVIDIA's technology in there. So I think... Nice more interesting stuff happening there yeah 
and uh, dual to motor to set up with a large battery and claim Love of 600 that. kilometer range Ooh, which is about 360 nice. something miles i think yeah about that yeah which is decent well, that's not bad i trust them because obviously it's volvo um, yeah so i trust their technology than anyone else like for safety so i trust their lidar more than anyone else <laughs> and um it's a geely battery packs so they're the battery packs basically outside of tesla um because they're the chinese manufacturer but they make god uh volvo and mercedes and smart and mg maybe um so anyone that's basically part owned by geely runs through them now so that'd be good it's a good combination that you know a lot of people are doing this now. They're basically, Julia kind of going, we're going to manufacture battery packs and gener- and engines, and then you package them how you want. So they bought half a company here and there, so they own half a Smart and half a Mercedes and half of Volvo. And they're like, you design them for your markets, for what people like. We'll keep working on the powertrains and the batteries and make them better. And then together, we'll both sell good cars. And that's a really good way to go, because then also, like, you know, the parts work in so many different vehicles that it cuts down on waste as well. Um, but, you know, maybe it might become a bit of a monopoly. Who knows? But for the time being, it's really good because Chile make really good electric cars. So, yeah. And like you said, Polestar's got a good reputation. Polestar has a great reputation. Yeah. I'd, I'd pick that over other cars if I could afford one in that, cl- in that price range. Yeah. I like, think they're really well reviewed their first two cars as well. Yeah. Um, they kind of they they kind of sit on par with top rated Teslas, so I'd pick that over a Tesla any day. Um, yeah, I think that's the thing, isn't it? People will mostly go to Tesla because they know it, but also they actually have a bad reputation, especially in the US, for the quality control. Mm, and I don't think I've heard just, a bad word against Polestar. No, it's, it's it, the only thing I have against Tesla is just kind of it's become that kind of it's like an iPhone kind of crowd. Mm, like, yeah. and also it's sort of like this the 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 specs are so varied. Like if if you ordered like a top model, top range model, and I ordered one three months later, we'd have different specs in the same car because they kind of run out of something and put something else in its place. Like they run <laughs> out of a fabric, so they offer a different fabric, and then they run out of this and this. And then if you want it repaired, you got no, you have to wait for them to come and fix it in the drive or send it off to them, and someone will pick up our trailer and take it away, God knows where, and then fix it and bring it back to you. Whereas at least they're still the main dealer with these people. They're still you can take these to a Volvo garage and they will fix it for you. So. Mm. It, it feels more comforting. I know the kind of part of the benefit of Tesla, I suppose, is that kind of moving away from the old school things of buy a car in person and have it, you know, come and pick it up on the same day and go to a dealer. They kind of wanted to get away from that because they thought that was kind of old fashioned, but you kind of need that with those sort of things at the moment still um, until they've got a good on the ground service. So that's just me. Yeah. Um, you know, I like I like Teslas. They do they've done wonders for the industry, but they I think they're lacking in they're good in their range, they're good in their technology, but they're lacking in their customer service and their consistency. I think personally, I know, I'm right. sure that will upset some people, but from yeah, what I not see upset. around, that's, that's kind of where I feel. But... Main man himself mm. onto something a little different. Ooh, beautiful, love you it. You saw this, didn't Get, you? Need ten of them. <laughs> so this is a Porsche nine two eight. Which is mm. kind of taking. There seems to be a trend lately, doesn't there, of making like old cars and making yeah. them update them. So, sort of what, yeah. what was it? What's the phrase they used? Uh, uh, resto mod. mod. So basically, taking an old school car and making it look kind of modern. Yeah. Um, there's some images at the bottom of this article. I think which are a bit, a bit better. So it's got I love like, it. This is the only Porsche I actually like. Um, it looks old but new. It's weird. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's like I love it. I, I like punk, retro sort of. future retro cars that are modern. Like any anyone that's making an old retro electric version of a car. I know that is electric, but if they made it electric, oh, perfect. But, <laughs> yeah, it's cut, these headlights are weird. They like pop up. Yeah, they they pop out, don't they? They're properly fall forward. Um, the it's because it's illegal to have pop up headlights now. Um, is it? So they have. Yeah, because um, oh. you because you're not allowed to have anything on the car that will impale or impede someone rolling over the bonnet so you can't have hood ornaments and you can't have pop-up headlights uh, or no um, bull bars or no bull bars I think you can have bull bars <laughs> okay. I still see them um, I think they have to come spec I don't think you can put them on separately Right. but yeah but I like it I like it a lot 
Um, some are going more extreme. There's there's a company called the Morris Electric Vehicle Company, and they bought the rights to one of the old Morris fans from like the thirties, mm. and they're making an electric versions of it, and it looks amazing. And you can color code it in like beautiful candy colors with white side panels. I think you were hoping for something that looked like that for the new DeLorean, right? You just wanted an yeah, old school I, car. I, yeah, I, I wanted new. it to be eighties modern, like really just smooth it out a bit and then make it look keep the same trend um but they went completely the wrong way with it so, <laughs> i'm not the only one that don't like it a lot of people don't like it apparently so that's fine talking about but, going um, the wrong way with things yeah. turn your segue <laughs> into the ai chatbot which unfortunately oh, no. has nothing nothing no imagery but apparently somebody's created a bot for a- ai um and made it look at 4chan <laughs> Why so it's gone you? through, oh my he trained this bot uh, uh, using an open source language model on a data set containing three and a half years of posts scraped from 4chan's image board. Uh-huh. And naturally, that bot started posting quite a lot <laughs> and uh, very dodgy things. What it was spewing you? insults and conspiracy theories before it was banned. <laughs> so in a very short space of time. What do you expect? It's like, oh, we read this AI Mein Kampf and suddenly it became a Nazi. But yeah, it did, because you're reading it the worst material in the world. Goodness. Like, like I say, Microsoft, we talked about this before, didn't we? Microsoft did it and their one had to be shut down within like a week because yeah. it suddenly became the most horrific thing on Twitter. But how bad <laughs> How bad must it have been to get banned from 4chan? 4chan, <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. That must have, it must have really gone after some incels and had to go at them to ban it. Like goodness me um, the, the registers said it probably didn't do any harm posting what is already a very hostile environment <laughs> <laughs> mad I, I don't think I've been on that website in like five years because it's just, it's just I just know what it's going to be like yeah it's just, people, it's just posts for posts sake and just deliberately trying to get a rise out of people um, crazy I would like to have seen what the bot had done but it would probably be such nonsense <laughs> Yeah, it'll just be key phrases strung together on it for the most registry. Like, you'll see, I'll talk about this, I'll put that in a sentence. It is when when you see all these I made made it watch five hours of Friends and write a Friends episode, you know, it's like that. Those things are quite fun, aren't they? They're funny, they're funny, they're fake as hell, but they're funny. But, um, yeah, it's just like that. It's just going to combine the the key elements together, isn't it? This talking about Uh, this reminds me of of a thing. So Google's updated their guidance for webmasters. And um, apparently you are not allowed to use AI generated content on your website that doesn't add value to the user and isn't obviously edited by a, a human. It's one of the Google's uh, guidelines uh, for their website, which is really interesting in a world where a lot of publishers are pushing towards using yeah. AI to create content. And theoretically, the AI is getting better and better at doing it. And Google know. themselves are working on AI to do these sorts of things as well. So it's really weird that they're pushing against it. And maybe, I, think, maybe, I mean, it's good in a way, but I don't know. It's a bit, I thought it was a bit of a strange move from them, but it was interesting. Yeah. So it goes with one way and the other with AI. Oh, do we want to... Oh, you know what we haven't included in this... In this document? I can't remember. Can you remember what the name of that... Um, the Dali thing is? You know, the... Dali Mini... There's a Twitter account, isn't there? I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, though. Oh, hold on. So somebody's created... We, it's the same sort of thing that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago where yeah. you try and find it while I explain. Oh, um, yeah. So someone's created a thing, basically, um, where you can go onto the website and it uses AI to generate images based on the text that you input. Google created something, but then they refused to share it with... <laughs> with the world because they were worried about how it was used but there's this one called De- daily mini or day De- i can't i can't remember how you say it but it's uh, Dali mini, yeah. so someone's been making so it's been there's an account on uh twitter which is resharing stuff that had been shared on um reddit and it's basically loads of these images uh hold on i think top I people I'd, i thought i found one have you managed to find it or not? Not the official, not the official one. No, just other people sharing it all. That's if you just do, if you just look for Dali Mini, you'll find loads of it. Yeah, but they're not what I was looking for. Um, oh. 
Oh well, maybe we'll have to revisit that next week. But it's pretty interesting because it's it's silly things, isn't it? Like um, oh my god, there's some great ones at the moment. Yeah, someone had put in like the Demogorgon from Stranger Things going shopping or holding a basketball <laughs> or some nonsense. My favorite one are the um the courtroom sketches because it just works so well. So it's like Godzilla in a courtroom sketch, and then it just makes them look like they're crayon based, and it's so stupid. <laughs> love it. I love it all. Hold on, I, I think I might have it. found one. I think I might have found it. Oh. Yeah, here we go. Um, so there's this account here on Twitter. Oh, here we go. So they put the Demogorgon from Stranger Things holding a basketball. <laughs> and it's like, this is obviously generated by AI, and it's certainly not as good as, good as those Google ones that we were looking no. at before. Oh, no, not but at all. But there's some pretty funny the, ones in here. The people ones are really stupid, yeah. What's this one? <laughs> capital minions, attack minions. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so no. the minions have gone to the capital. Um, oh, that's, no. that was, yeah, some really bad. <sighs> this good. is what happens when you give the. This is why Google didn't release their tool. <laughs> uh, oh, this well, was, was a funny one. This is what I shared with. Oh uh, yeah. Well, it was funny and Hindenburg disaster but in Fortnite. So that was Fortnite special event of the Hindenburg disaster, which feels right, like yeah. it could actually happen. Uh, there were airships in the last. But a special event actually, and you had to blow them up. So yeah, well, you cut them in half with a giant robot sword. That's cool. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Voltron. It was great. Crazy. It's crazy. It's good. It was good. Uh, onto something less mad, but be less warned mad. if you've got vertigo because I watched this video and I thought, wow. Oh yeah, this thing. So, um, so if you don't know already, this is a um, spin launch. Is what it's called. Hmm. Sorry, I've got. Wind. Um, so is they're basically developing a tool which looks like this weird tube, but it, mm. it basically is their plan is to be able to fire stuff into space by spinning it in this centrifuge sort of thing and then shooting it out the top, which is just crazy. Just flow, isn't it? Like, Instead of a rocket, but they've um, put a camera on one and then yeah. just fired it off, and it it looks mad. Uh, in it made me feel a bit oh, ill. Sword, I thought I've seen the pictures, but it's oh no, no, no there's a car in the way. That's so fine. the demo. Here we go. Look, uh, start yeah. from, start from inside. So you, there you can see it shooting out the top, and then you get a yeah. view of what that's going to be of what that's like. So here it is going round in, inside, and then off into off, and it takes a while, but it's just spinning. Wow. It's a measure being on that. <laughs> oh god, yeah, it's kind of like um, uh, they've talked about this for like space planes before having these giant ramps that they shoot up um, and they're kind of like magnetically catapulted up so I suppose it's just a very small version of that really I can't actually look at it, it's making me feel weird <laughs> <laughs> just see it out of the corner of my eye it's, it's funny because you can tell once it like once the gravity starts to not impede against it because it starts to slow the rotation down a bit yeah and like the, you know, now, it's, now it's out of gravity because there's no force acting on it, that's quite cool it's very awesome yeah, awesome. there's there's a lot of cool little space people and you think, why don't you just all get together and make one big ship and just <laughs> help Dude. us all help us all out? I love you that know? loads of people are into it though, I think it's great that they're mm. all, all working on it in their own ways for different reasons, but Oh thanks to Star Trek. <laughs> Not Star Wars. No. <laughs> that's not about exploration, is it? That's about space wizards with swords. And then another space thing. There's a lot of, a lot of space themes yeah, going on this a lot week. Of space going but... on. Um, it, yeah. so someone from the ISS they showed a time lapse to show uh, that sometimes mm. the sun doesn't set so for some yeah. amount of time in the high beta seasons like in early May the plane mm. of the orbit is such that they never get shadowed by the earth which means that the view <laughs> from the ISS is basically never the sun never <laughs> goes down and it's oh, they're going around the, the earth at 13,000 miles an hour or something where they're seeing yeah. the sun constantly don't show this to the flat earthers. Yeah, no, but look, proof. So, uh, we, we, me and you <laughs> talked about this earlier in the week, is watching that documentary on Netflix oh, yeah. about the flat earthers. It's great, isn't it? It's so funny. Which I can't remember the name of now. Uh, what Beyond the Curve. Beyond the Curve, yeah. And it's, yeah, it's really funny. And it it's ends so with them basically chef. disproving that the earth's <laughs> flat. It's chef's kiss, isn't it? It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's like, just awkward. Well, they're going to stand 15 metres away and then we won't be able to see the picture. We can oh, see, well, apparently... I can see a light! The reeds okay. are in the way. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's so good, isn't it? It's like... I, I more love that the guy spends like five grand on, on a geosynchronous... geosynchronization device 
to prove that it doesn't exist and it starts proving that it shows like a seven degree movement is that well clearly it's broken and they take it back to the people and they're like it's not broken this will go in an airplane tomorrow and they're like that's broken and like okay here's a new one and then they try to put it in some sort of miracle stone capsule oh, that's yeah. supposed to block out god rays because that's a scientific thing <laughs> and then it still keeps detecting the drift <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's almost like it's real and i just <laughs> i love it it's just Especially and one when of the intercept every now and then, just like a psychiatrist who's like, yeah, these people just, they need to feel special because something has gone wrong in their life. And they need to feel like they're on the inside and not being neglected by society. And there was and a bit the talking problem. to the, there was a bit talking to the main guy or about mm. him and saying that basically, you know, you've got to this position where you can't now say, actually, I was wrong. <laughs> the yeah. earth's round because they just get disowned by everybody. Yeah. And like, you know, it'd be really bad for him on the internet they, and wherever else. They just else. think they're, they've been bought by the government, didn't they? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's just annoys me because they, you know, oh, they're trying to keep the the world flat and keep it from you. Or there's secret bases in Antarctica. It's sort of like the governments are doing bad stuff now. Though you don't need to worry about this other stuff. Like, there's enough real stuff happening that's bad <laughs> that you should probably be more worried about. And they're like, no, because spaceships. And they're like, no, no spaceships. And what's the logic of flat Earth? It's because the, so they can convince you to do anything they want, including having um, injections. Yeah, so don't have things. the injections. Buy my buy my special tonic for ten dollars a bottle. <laughs> I, I kind of want to talk to a, rift a, every a flat time. Earther just so they can explain <laughs> because I don't yeah. understand it. I don't understand all, the logic. All of it comes down to a grift. It's basically if you can if you can convince them not to believe science, not to believe experts, they'll believe anything. So as long as you're convinced enough and you disprove everyone else enough in a confusing way that they struggle to track, but go, well, it must be right because he's saying it with such a condemnation, then you can get them to do anything. You can get them to vote for what you want. You can get them to support what you want. You can get them to buy what you want. And that's all what it has always been. You just blind them with nonsense and they'll buy your products. Like all these things, like all the all the... Uh, QAnon were like two people it turned out didn't they? they someone managed to data mine back Twitter and found out it was just two people doing it and the two people that do it own all these companies that sell like water and anti-tracking devices and like Faraday cages all these things that don't work and don't do anything but people those people spend millions a year on this stuff and yeah. all these companies are all linked back to these one people or these two people that are putting out these conspiracies and spreading them I mean, it's just spread like wildfire because people are not well educated, are scared, and have access to 24 hour news that they don't <laughs> understand and 24 hour internet, which they can, anyone can make a video convince you anything. Here's a tenuous and, segue. Wait, let's... Yep. <laughs> tenuous segue to oh, speaking tenuous of segue. too much internet. I wait for you to say something that links to the next story. <laughs> Because it's too much <laughs> internet. Guide me to, oh, we might like TikTok. You said you might say, oh, funny you should mention TikTok. <laughs> too much internet, he says, TikTok. No, no TikTok's one, no, trying to convince cool. you to stop using it so much. Why? Because they've got a screen time feature so that you can basically <laughs> get an alert if you've been using it for too no. long okay. to this, let you this, know. This is, this is because there's Chinese laws about screen time. Um, so they've just had to roll it out over the, what's the Chinese version of TikTok called? I've forgotten now. Whatever the Chinese version's called has a screen time use system because the Chinese government has limited screen time for people of a certain age. Um, and then they've had to roll it out to this platform as well. I think it's a good thing. I've noticed a uh, worrying okay. trend of phone addiction to my, for myself, not criticising anyone else. I noticed that I am <laughs> addicted to my phone and I don't want to be. And oh, I have you, to force myself to, to put it somewhere friend, else. That's exactly why I don't use TikTok, but I do yeah, stroll, yeah. scroll through YouTube shorts and, <laughs> he did show um, to me and Instagram months, yeah. <laughs> stuff yeah. a bit too much. And I'm heavily on there, obviously, because I'm a YouTube channel, so I'm yeah, checking yeah. my stats. But I also try and turn my phone off at the weekend and just leave it away oh, so I can spend more time with my family. But it's, it's too easy to just grab it and uh, doom scroll or whatever else, and I don't want to be yeah. doing that. So it's to, nice to, to see fair, a company to, doing once, this. Once, once TikTok starts learning what you want to see, it is exceptionally accurate algorithm. Like, there's literally videos going where people have no tags on, they just go, oh, I know why you're watching this, because you like like nerdy girls with, who like Star Wars and Star Trek, and, and it just pops up, and it, you just get all these, they've got no hashtags at all, but the audio, because it goes by audio, no hashtags, the audio will direct it to you, because it knows what you watch. 
Mm. It's incredibly good. It's incredible. It, I the, the thing I'm always in awe of with TikTok is its algorithm. It's fantastic. There's a Netflix For... show about about this. It's not oh. just about TikTok. It's about social media in general. I can't remember what the name I'm of it is. I've seen that now. There's the Social one. Dilemma. It's called. And oh, if you've yeah, not seen it, yeah. I'd highly yeah, recommend yeah, yeah, yeah. it. But yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. about how every one of these platforms want you to spend as much time as possible on them, which is yeah. ironic when I'm making and a YouTube video, which is going to be... There's, and... there's some that just don't make any money, but they sell it based on screen time. Yeah. And like so they're trying to keep no you on money. there, and that's why you get notifications even when you've not been using it, even though it might, it might not be anything important. I sometimes get notifications to say that I've posted an image. It's telling me that I've posted something. <laughs> Because I've got two yeah. accounts, but it's like, well, I know I did. Why my, are you telling me that? Yeah, my, mine does that as well. Yeah, it says, oh, you know, um, so I'm post a decent. I know. Yeah, okay. that's who I am. Thanks. Um, and they all do it, and they'll and they'll mm. send you. Facebook does it as well. Sends you emails. Facebook's all. I've turned off Facebook so much. Like, Facebook's amazing. They're all. They're all like it. it. They all just want to draw you back in and then keep you there yeah. for as long as possible. And. You know they're clever with it, but also the yeah. human psyche means you end up just doing it too much, and it's terrifying, and I, and I hate yeah. it. <laughs> if if it's free, you're the commodity. Yeah. Anyway, so use use the well being features. Look after yourself. Try not to okay. be on the internet too much, <laughs> unless you're watching um, my videos or me and Henry playing games, then that's fine. Yeah, your videos do come off my TikTok a lot every now and then because I follow you. <laughs> not as much as they used to, but they do. Bunny's in charge of TikTok account. Bunny is in charge of the TikTok account. This is true because I regularly get comments from the pro porn going, "Ha, funny," because she hasn't logged out of that account to log her account. So then talk what to she's me. Doing, yeah. So, so if you follow me on she... TikTok, it's not actually me. It's Bunny. <laughs> it's actually Bunny. So don't you know all that flirting isn't him. God. Um. <laughs> so Google's now apparently. Uh, Change the subject massively. Google has now calculated pi up to a hundred trillion digits, just because oh, they good. can. <laughs> One of the things that was interesting about this is that the process used five hundred fifteen terabytes of storage, <laughs> which is mad. And it took one hundred fifty-seven days to get up to a hundred trillion decimal place of pi, and apparently it broke the record by something ridiculous because it was like it, it was thirty-one trillion digits before now it's a hundred trillion doesn't it isn't it just the same number over and over again eventually or am i not thinking of that i, I have think not got else. enough knowledge of it to know i thought it was whatever point four 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 it's three point one four one five two nine six you can see some of it oh don't just load it the same oh, okay oh no there we go. three point one four one five nine two six five three eight nine seven nine two three you know and then on and on and on, oh, okay. and on and on and on but apparently the useful is important, there's some it sort of useful level of measurement so that's actually yeah pi serves many practical purposes numbers used counts of formula and real world applications including the pyramids of giza to operate in martian robots but there's some sort of oh. level where it becomes not really <laughs> uh, rarely uses rarely requires any more than 10 decimal places so why do you need 100 trillion but they wish it was sort of a demo of how powerful the technology has become and how how they can oh, do I it see. if they need to and maybe they could look for a pattern maybe it changed eventually it start it's pretty crazy. Calculate enough it starts going hello this is god congratulations it's, on reaching the final stage who knows it's mad to see all mm. the different technologies and then a completely different use of technology <laughs> saints row is hey, releasing saints row. so we're excited for this i think aren't we i am are you? i am you, you i am because the no, they got a bit mad but i still enjoyed them i um, think that's why they were good because they were so well, mental this is true you were just a bit crazy I think I, I got blown up and went to hell but when i first played it it was like it was like GTA, but mm. just insane. <laughs> and yeah. That was what was good about it because it wasn't. A lot of games were trying to clone the GTA formula, yeah, and doing an all right job of it. But um, Saints Row didn't really try to clone it. <laughs> it just went mad. But anyway, it's releasing on the twenty third of August, which isn't that long nice. now, really. No, no. But they've released the character builder, so they demonstrated some of the character builder in an mm. earlier trailer to show how much character customization there is. And now they're releasing it so that you can actually build your characters now, I oh. assume, so you'll be able to use them in the game at some point. Or maybe it's just to play around with it and get you excited I'm for the game. Around, yeah. But you can download can you, it can now. You, and... Can you still have a Cockney accent? Because my guy always had the Cockney accent. Did he? It was great. Because also, like, you change it and it would have that voice in the skin changes. Be the swaggiest. So... Oh, yeah. I think I remember that. 
Yeah. So I'm excited for this. Hopefully there'll be a lot of um, hilarious co-op shenanigans. Yeah, hopefully there is a good co-op to it. That'll be worth it. There was um, before, wasn't there? We used to play it with Froggy, I think, didn't we? Uh, maybe. I think we had three of us doing it. I vaguely remember something. It feels like ages ago. Yeah. Oh, is this somebody trying to make themselves? Oh, yeah, I did see somebody try to make... Wow. Impressive. Somebody tried to make um, Geralt of Rivia in... <laughs> Saints Row, so I guess you can... Oh, can you have her? She's amazing. I just like... Can be a vampire. The, the vehicle cut, it can be a vampire. It can be a, me as a bill. Oh, there's me. Yeah. Firefighter. Yeah. yeah, it looks like more of the same awesome, awesome yeah. times. <laughs> and I think that's it for this week. That is uh, all, mm. the, all the fun stuff, um, stuff I wanted to talk about. And this is anything else you can think of. Not off the top of my head now, it's appeared as we've gone along, so. Um, I was going to show off. I was going to show off something, but I'm not going to. You can have the picture of my wallpaper <laughs> as a teaser of what's yeah, going. Yeah. So if you're interested in Provoke Prawn stuff, I've done a video which is coming out tomorrow, which is titled I Upgraded My Fractal Torrent and Regretted It. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> clickbait title, but here you can see why <laughs> cables for days, but. It is actually a wonderful case. I would recommend it, despite my <laughs> title. This has been the Provoke Prawn and the wonderful Sir Henry Denman. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Please smash that subscribe button. Check out the links in the description to see the various stories if you want to read in more depth. <laughs> and subscribe to Henry's channel as well, so we can bully him into streaming. Thanks for watching, everybody.